Hey guys, it's Susie, and if you've just started watching my video series, thank you so much. And if you're one of the ones that has made my subscribership double in like two weeks, I cannot thank you enough. I'm getting so excited to see how much you're uh, resonating with the Canvas for Little series. So would you do me a favor and tell a friend if you love the video? If you don't like, love it, don't tell anybody. Uh, in tonight's video, we're going to talk about the unsung hero of Canvas, especially for little kids. We want a one-stop shop. That's Canvas. But within Canvas, we want a one-stop shop, again, where kids and their parents can find the materials they're looking for for a particular unit. So stay tuned as I talk to you about the best organizational feature of Canvas, modules. So before we get into building a module, we're going to talk about some ideas for why you would even use one. I want you to think of modules as folders in a filing cabinet, or if you're a OneNote fan, as I am, tabs in a OneNote notebook. Uh, if you're a Google Classroom fan, think of unit topics. It's just somehow that we take our materials and we organize them into a category so that when a parent's looking for a file related to that topic or an assignment or a page or a, you know, a quiz related to that topic, they can go right here. So again, I, I say parents because if you're teaching primary grades and kids are going to do any of this work outside of class, there needs to be an easy place for parents to get their students so that they can find what they need. So this is my Canvas for Littles course. I've recommended it several times and you can find it by searching the Canvas Commons for just my name, Susie Lolly, or just try my last name. I think somebody said that was a little easier. And inside that course, I have modules created for different topics. Like if I want you to store things, which is what we're talking about tonight, or if I wanna talk about announcements or cute Canvas, which was a previous video, you should watch it, a shameless plug. But what are some ideas that you might have for creating a module? Maybe you are, and I don't really want to junk this course up, so let me come down here. Let's go into a FACO course. Maybe you want to have a module where you put all your sight word activities. Like I have a, a teacher friend that I work with that uses different colors to denote different sight words that kids have leveled up to. So maybe she has all her sight word activities there. It could be the files and any activities that go with them. Maybe you want to organize by week. Maybe you have your first week materials or week of such and such. And parents and students know that every time it's a new week, they're going to go to that module. The cool thing is about modules that you can prepare them ahead of time and they can be unpublished or published. You can tell green check means it's published. If I were to unpublish that, I call this the Ghostbuster sign. So modules can be unpublished until you're ready for them. So if you're someone who's not me, but extremely good at working ahead, planning ahead, then uh, you're able to work as far ahead as you want and then just unpublish them and kids won't even see these until they get to them. So you ready to build one? Let's make it happen. So in this pretend course that I've so classily called not a course, I don't mind junking it up. So I'm just gonna walk you through the, the module building process here. To find modules as a teacher, you'll click the word modules from the yellow, or excuse me, I don't know where I got yellow from, from the blue navigation bar over here. And you're gonna to go to plus module. You're gonna give it a name. So let's, I've already got one first called first week. So let's say week of August 17th, one of our districts is going back then. We won't worry about these other options right now. We'll just click add module. It will automatically go to the bottom, but you can use the classy word I like to call draggy handle. <laughs> you can drag the module to reorder it any way you want to. And then I'm not going to publish mine right now, but if you forgot to publish the, mo the module title itself, anything underneath that kids would not be able to get access to, so that can be a good or a bad thing. But I'm not going to publish right now. To add things to it, you're going to click this plus, not this one up here, that's a new module, but this little black plus. And you will see a drop down menu for all the things you can add. I want you to notice something. If you want to build an assignment, do it within a module. If you want to build a quiz or a page or a discussion, if you'll start here first, then you will be organizing and creating at the same time. It's a couple extra clicks, but then you don't forget to go back and add something to a module later, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to start with a discussion. You can pick whatever you want. It'll always give you an option. Let me see if there's one, if there's anything I've actually built here. If I had picked page and I had something already built, I could then again, organize it into a module, but I'm just gonna show you how you can build here from scratch. So I'm gonna go to discussion. It'll ask me for new. That's a choice on every dropdown. And then I'm gonna call this, would you rather? I don't normally capitalize, but that's the title. You can decide whether to indent or not. That's just a looks thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click add item. And I now have two unpublished things, an unpublished module and an unpublished discussion. I'm going to go ahead and click on that discussion. And I can go into edit mode and work on this discussion right from here. So again, I'm organizing it and creating it at the same time. Would you rather be a tree in fall or spring? Why? 
okay? I would do a better job if that were, you know, a real question. And then I can come down here and add whatever options. The point is not to show you discussions on this one, that's in a later video, but just to show you that I can create that right in a module. So now if I go back to modules, do, 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 there we go. If I go back to modules, again, the discussion is published, the module is not. So when I was ready to release this whole set of activities, I would need to simply click the Ghostbusters button, that's what I call it, and release that activity. So everything's very organized. I know that this week I'm supposed to be doing da 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 da, all these things. Let me show you one more time something else you can add. I'm gonna click the plus. This time I will add a page that I already have in Canvas. So instead of clicking new and giving it a name, I'll just pick one here. Who knows what's on that? I don't. And again, I have draggy handles. So if I need to reorder anything, I can. So I'm going to give you this piece of advice, and it was in an earlier video. You want to simplify your sidebar. To know how to do that, go back and watch. I mean, again, shameless plug. Go back and watch the video. But I should not have 55 choices over here on the left. If I know I'm going to always create and organize into a module anyway, I do not have to have accessible for students the word pages or assignments or quizzes because if they come to modules, they will see all that information anyway. Let me give you one more tip here, and it was also from a previous video, but you can always add an emoji to the title of your module. So if I click edit, and I wanna make sure that there's something really accessible for them here, they can, my little kids can find this easily. Then I can say, hey guys, you're gonna to go to the module that has a balloon on it or whatever it is. And I just opened my emoji keyboard by pushing windows and the plus, okay? Windows and plus anywhere you can type text if you're on a Windows 10 machine. If you're on a Chromebook, then you'll pull up your touch screen keyboard. I'm not on one, so I can't demonstrate that for you. And then I'm just gonna update module. There's more to modules. I think for little kids that's sufficient, but um, I hope you, that you enjoyed this. You got something out of this tip and I'm gonna share with you one other thing. So modules are wonderful for several different reasons, a couple of which I haven't mentioned yet. Number one, I told you that they're good as folders. If kids jump in, they know exactly where to go. So do their parents. But also here are a few other tips. They are also expandable and collapsible. So this list can get quite long. If you'll look at my, um, again, my Canvas for Littles course, you will see that I have quite a, well, let's just look at that, yeah, that one. Okay, right here. You will see that I have quite a few modules in here. And if I were to have all those expanded, it would be crazy town. And so you can expand and collapse. Now that does not affect what your students see. You need to teach them that trick as well. Um, to go back to the dashboard and jump into that other course. So they're expandable and collapsible. Here's something else I like. Once a child has jumped into a module, they will always have at the bottom a next button. I love that it tells them exactly where to go. And then if you add a little tip that says end of module, like a little GIF on a page, then they also know when to stop. So let me show you what I'm talking about there. If I go back to my modules, I'm gonna create this the way I would want you to do it. They always know where to go next, but sometimes they might keep on going through the flow of canvases. When you finish a module, it doesn't always tell you to stop. If this module were published, they would just be able to keep on going without even realizing that they've continued. So what you can do is you can add to every module, this is my recommendation, add a new page called end of module. And hopefully I didn't reuse that one in this section, okay? Again, that page has nothing on it because I just created a placeholder for it. I can go into edit mode and who knows whatever will pop up on Bitmoji, but I'm gonna go to Bitmoji and just search for D and, and hopefully something weird doesn't pop up. <laughs> like I won't put the beer mug on there for sure. Um, so I can just paste for my students usually. Do, 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 do. Y'all have had to sing the Jeopardy song twice on here. The end or this one, okay, copy the image, paste it in, that's okay, it's not working. So you can always just put the end, stop here, and then for your littles, of course, we want some kind of visual, so I'm gonna pull up my favorite emoji keyboard again and push, type stop, and I can probably even change the font size of that to be huge, yep. So that way kids don't automatically move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and publish that, and now, if you are working through that module, and you finished Would You Rather, you did the discussion or whatever, and you clicked Next, 
then it would tell you the end, stop here, don't go. So you can make yours cuter than mine. Bitmoji didn't want to play along tonight just because you're watching. But anyway, so those are just some other tips to make it more functional. It puts them in the right place. It keeps them going in the right order. And then if you add an end of module tip, it'll stop them at the right place. So I hope this was helpful for you. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you wanna gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.